and here on Radio Row at Media Day is one of the, the stars of the week every year, Ryan yeah, McGee. I don't know about that. You, you, this, we're, clearly we're at the end of the week, and you just <laughs> ran out of people to call. No, it's it's been a good week. I, I will be the first to tell you I was with the group that was like, man, why are we going to Dallas? Mm-hmm. You know, But this has been great, and the facility has been great. I don't walk outside because it's 145 degrees, literally. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's been great, and, and I think that the – I, the mood has been good. You know, I, the, all the different uh, coaches have been pretty loose, I think, even the rookies. I'm always curious to see when someone is experiencing this for the first time. Like Mike Elko, um, you know, obviously was in the SEC before with Texas A&M, but he'd never done this as a head coach. And, and I'll be at ACC Media Days next week. Very different vibe, like super different vibe. And so it's always fun to watch the rookies kind of navigate the thing. You know, like Josh a couple of years ago. It's sure. interesting watching with that, you know, one of the most uncomfortable humans I've ever seen in my life was Jeremy Pruitt the first year he came here for media days. I always said his underwear like is 17 sizes too small, right? Yeah. Said so he and he get better at it. But but it was but it, but it, but it's been a great week and I think everybody's the experience has been good. Well, we were uh, about to talk off air and then started to come back on, but I've already said this on air. I thought a few days ago that Josh Heupel seemed pretty loose yeah. not on this show. We talked to him about the confidence that he has and he said, "Well, I'm always confident, but it it could be different if you believe you have a team right. that's going to do what you hope to accomplish. Do you think that's part of it? Part of it can also be experience this fourth year. What yeah. Did, what did you say this I week? I think it's all of the above, but I, I think that we can – you and I have both been doing this for a while, and Marty and I talk about this all the time. We know really quickly when – because preseason, everybody's going to go 12-0 and, and we're all going to make the playoff and it's all going to be great. But you can tell when someone's just saying that. And then you can tell when someone really believes. I go back to it was a couple of years ago. Mark Stoops was in the room with us when we were doing our Marty McGee uh, talking season specials. And Stoops was giving us the sell and everything. And we could realize, we were like, oh, no, he, he believes it. And that team, greatest team maybe in the history of Kentucky football. They like, well, they won 11 games and played. So I, when, when you know they know they've got something for real, you can tell. And I think that's part of it. And honestly, too, it's just a good vibe in the building right now. You know, I was in Omaha on the field with with with, with Rick Barnes and with Josh and you know, obviously with Tony V and Peyton and everybody after the Dash Championship. And momentum is a real thing, and the vibe in the building is a real thing. And I'm I'm not, uh, you know, this. I'd go back to 2004. You know, maybe the last time the entire building felt good. And and so it's it's a good vibe right now, and I think he's feeding off of that. Yeah, in Knoxville, Ryan McGee is with us, ESPN. We've been able to tell when the vibe wasn't. Yeah, when it wasn't for 20 years. But it's right. it's legitimately good, and I yep. think for real reasons yeah. too. No, I think so too. And, and I just there's confidence in the process. There's confidence in the leadership. There's confidence in the coaches. You know, one of the things that I've talked to talked to Josh Heupel about is being in the room with these coaches. And one of the things we talked to him about in our room, in the Marty McGee interview room, a couple of days ago, which was, you know. We all these coaches have been a part of athletic departments where the basketball coach, the football coach, don't talk, and the football coach sure doesn't talk to the women's basketball coach, and the volleyball coach and the cross country aren't even invited in the room. That's not the case in Knoxville. Everyone's talking all the time, and we ask. So, are, so like when you're on the plane headed to Omaha from Knoxville, Josh Heupel, and you're riding with Rick Barnes. And then that night, y'all are having a beer with Tony Vitello. What are you talking about? And he's like, we talk about coaching, and we talk about process, and we talk about these things. And so, you know, I, I'm old school, right? And I can remember when Johnny Majors and Pat Summit would have those conversations. And, and, and you could tell the difference in the building, the vibe in the building. And so I think that exists right now, and it has not, I don't think, overall in a while. Yeah, I want to get back to the football side of things, but you mentioned you were in Omaha. What was that like, that scene? It was nuts. Man, Tennessee it was crazy. All right, you know I'm an alum, right? And mm-hmm. so – it was kind of like the Alabama game two years ago. You know the story about me. I had to cover the game, and I covered it great. And I was an impartial member of the media. And I wrote my gamer for that Alabama-Tennessee win that I was very proud of. And as soon as the editor went, you're off the clock, I was in the old city with a cigar, right? And so Omaha was a lot like that. My editor was actually with me. Kim Brennison was with me in Omaha sitting. I mean, she's sitting you know, two feet from me. And so I go down the field, interview everybody, I come back, I file my story, and I actually watch her go through the process of it. She proofs it, she sends it to research, she puts it on the Internet, and she looks at me and she goes, we're live, you're off the clock. And I go, thank you very much. And I walked <laughs> out the door, and there were a lot of Tennessee fans out on the street waiting on the team, and someone offered me an adult beverage, and I, I took one. I'll tell you this, I was on a 6.30 flight back to Charlotte, literally never went to bed. 
Never went, never even considered going to bed. All so. nighter. How, how did that feel, by the way? It felt. Uh, I'm. I'm. It, <laughs> All nighter. I, I used to be king of the all nighter. I ain't that good at it anymore. So I kind of picked my spots. That'll yeah. be the only all nighter of 2024 for me. But it was yeah. it was totally worth it. I just like I'll sleep on the plane. Yeah. Uh, Tony Vitello, something, huh? Yeah. And you know, I, it's funny. I don't really know him that well. Okay. I have interviewed him before. Um, you know, we, we've had him on Marty McGee before. Um, I think I interviewed him one time when I was sitting in for Paul Feinbaum. But I don't really know him very well. And so, and I've been critical of him in the past about. The fact that and I'm, everyone knows this, what you love about him is the emotion and wearing it on your sleeve, but that's also held them back. You know, I was in Omaha when what, coach got thrown out and somebody threw a clipboard and they lost the game in Texas. And we all remember what happened the following year when they were the best team anyone had ever seen before. So my questioning to him on the Friday was about that. And I don't think he liked that because I've talked about that before. But later we talked about it and he – he owned it. We had him on Marty McGee and talked about that very topic, you know, just two weekends ago. So I don't, I don't. The point is, I didn't really know him that well, but as a college baseball, you know, media member, I watched him from afar, mm-hmm. and I think there's no question that his approach has changed. And I think he'll tell you that he just doesn't like, he didn't like admitting to it. <laughs> yeah, he'd rather d- tell you instead it, of you tell him. A hundred percent. Yeah, but but it's but I but I it is it, he he you know who he is. He's Spurrier. He's the coach that. Everyone loves to hate unless he's your coach. And if he's your coach, then you love having him around. Yeah, and, you're going to have his back, and Tennessee fans do. Yeah, and guess what? He's the first one to bring a ring in the building in a really long time in anything. Yeah, which is a big deal. changes a lot of the conversation, it too. It does, and it changes that mood that we're talking about. Yep. Ryan McGee, ESPN, have, uh, have you had a favorite conversation this week, one or two stories or conversation that stand out with what you're doing with Marty McGee here? Yeah, I mean, listen, Sam Pittman – is I would I would I would dive into a canyon of nails for that man. He's just he's just great. Anyone that doesn't like him has never actually talked to him. And so we have our questions, right? We have our football questions, and you got to ask about this, got to ask about that, and and then we also have you know our cornbread you know versus biscuit question. And this year is about barbecue, and also we led with that. Look, the question this year has been which what what is barbecue to you? Because depending on where you live now in this huge footprint, it could be brisket, it could be a pulled pork sandwich, it could be ribs, a Calhoun's, whatever. Well, we usually would do that at the end. We want to make sure we got to it. We led with that with Pittman. Literally never talked about football. It was 20 minutes of him breaking down, you know, how you do a brisket and where's the place, place to get that. And at some point he's talking his pontoon boat and Miracle Whip, a lot of Miracle Whip talk. So, yeah, he was – but football-wise, um, I'm – I'm really excited for hardcore, like old school SEC fans to get to know uh, Brent Venables. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I got to know Brent when he was at Oklahoma as an assistant. I got to know him when he was the defense coordinator at Clemson. Looks like he could play right now, by the way. Um, but but I'm 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 really really excited for and Tennessee fans know this because they've been there. But but for everyone to experience going to Norman, you know, going to Austin, but really going to Norman. Go, the, the, the game day experience in Norman is amazing. It's a very different vibe, but it's just it's awesome. So I'm excited about that, and and they are excited to bring that to the SEC. And yeah, that's gonna be great. Yeah, Tennessee and Oklahoma had the home and home in 14, 15, right. 14. Tennessee was trying to get going. 15 was competitive. Oklahoma comes back and right. wins, but you know, they play this year, yep. so they're they're gonna experience it. It's the the open. You think that's a coincidence that Josh Heupel is going back to Norman oh, for Oklahoma's SEC that's opener? Be great. And for folks that don't know that history, we're gonna teach you all about it before we get there. Uh, it's it's an amazing. He was so good. Yeah, he could have won the Heisman. You know, when you get there, they have statues of all their Heisman winners, and it's a lot of guys. Yeah. And he could have with, with 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 one more great weekend, he could have been one of those guys. But yeah, but, lost to Ladanian Tomlinson, who had one of the you know, great college performances. To me, yeah. one of the greatest players that didn't win the Heisman. But but I yeah, I'm I'm really. I'm excited, and there's a lot of drama there. So I'm, I'm excited about that, but no, I do not. I, there, I, we, the guy who does the scheduling lives in Charlotte, where I live. I've had dinner with him, and he has walked me through this algorithm of how they put the schedules together. But there is, I know this, there is a clickable part of that algorithm that if you are looking for a little extra drama, you can plug a game in and let everyone else fill in. So, yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of non-accidents on that. Uh, I mean, the fact that Texas is going to Texas A&M for the first time that game will have been played in a decade and a half and as a conference game now. Yeah, that's an underrated part of that, that game. That is coach, not an game. accident. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, 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 as a college football fan, I have thought that is just a big hole 
in college football, not having that game on Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. And now for that thing to come back, it's going to be – no, it's going to be nuts. But, no, it's not a coincidence. You know, it's the NFL scheduling model. You know, that that opening weekend there's always a couple, oh, we we have a Super Bowl rematch already? Yes. Yes, you do. And that ain't the algorithm. Yep. By the way, just to correct myself, Winky won the Heisman. He uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Uh, Josh was ahead of Ladanian. Which he was actually ahead. makes it even yeah. more impressive. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, just just to make sure I get my. But LT correct is one there. of those guys. You look back, you're like, he yeah. didn't win the Heisman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Ryan McGee, ESPN. So uh, Tennessee's playoff hopes. What do you think? It's a 12 team playoff, which has also changed the media day conversation because a lot. We used to talk about two or three teams, yep. maybe three, with a chance to get in. Now we're talking about. Four Eight or, or nine teams that at least are making some kind of case to get in. Yeah, and, and, and having conversations with the people who have run the models, mm-hmm. like in the conference office, and they'll start holding up five fingers because they they know there's a scenario out there. Now, I, I, I don't know if it's great for college football as a whole if they got five SEC schools in the first playoff, yeah. but they're going to get four. I mean, I, I, and, and I just think, I think that the conversation changes. The two things that change with the conversation with expanded playoff are, one – now, uh, Coastal Carolina and San Diego State and Southern Mississippi, they can recruit on, we can make the college football playoff, because they can. And, and in the past, that, they were not even in the conversation. And the other part of it is, is if the SEC is going to get four teams in, who's the fourth team? And so there's, if you lose a game early, you still have a chance. If you yeah. lose a second game the right way in October, you still have a chance. And so I think Tennessee is probably in that second group. Um, they're going to need a. They're going to take some losses. I don't think there's any question about that. But I think that that doesn't eliminate them from playoff talks. That's a real long way of saying, yeah, I think they're a playoff contender. You think you'll get to Knoxville this year? They'll have yes. uh, Bama's back in Knoxville. Uh, this yes. year. I don't know if that's it. Or- I already. So we. So the folks know Marty McGee and SEC Nation. We don't find out where we're going until usually the Sunday before. That's going to change a little bit now with the ABC and the ESPN deal kicking in. We'll know a little bit in advance, but. There are certain games that we have been told to don't write it in Sharpie, but maybe write it in an erasable pen. And I think that the third Saturday in October is definitely on the list. So I don't think there's any way we're not going to get to Knoxville at least some point this year. You uh, spoke not this past spring, but the spring before, right, at Tennessee's graduation. Yeah. Would you have been invited if Tennessee sports weren't back in a successful position? <laughs> Do you think that helped get you the invite? I'm not sure how that happened. I want to go, did y'all pull my transcript? Because I, I barely got out of here. Yeah. Y'all, going, y'all going to invite me back? That was a great day, man. And it, it was – I mean, it really was it, – it was, it was, I, I was surprised at how emotional I got. And I, I, the other, I, I did get a Jeremy Pruitt joke in there. And uh, Donnie Plowman, who I adore, right. was sitting right behind me. And this was right after the whole awkward hotel hearing deal and all that other stuff. And uh, I, they wanted me to send my speech in ahead of time. And I thought it was maybe to, to edit it, censor it. No, no, they are just printing it out for me. But I was, I was like, do I drop this Pruitt joke at this particular time? And the audience loved it. And I kind of turned around and looked at, at the chancellor, and she was laughing. So, yeah, but it, it, what, what an out-of-body experience, though, to walk into Thompson Bowling, having graduated there myself, mm-hmm. and the building – it certainly looks different, feels different. It's the same building. I mean, you know, it's still got the same guts. And so to be there that day was um, – I still cannot believe they asked me to do that. Yeah. That's really cool Yeah, that they did. I think I told you, you know, because of the air- airport, I, my, I spell McGee the correct way without an H in it. But because of the airport, I spent four years having to go change my name and everything. And I, I got my diploma backstage, and it was McGee. <laughs> So I had to wait to right? get my corrected diploma later. I'm like, come on, man. Why don't you switch it so it just lines well, up? I said that in the speech. <laughs> I, go, I looked at the list. I go, there's no McGee's out here, and that's good. I said, I told the story about, you know, getting my misspelled. But, you know, but, it's, uh, but I, I got the correct misspelled when hanging in the office. I should have kept the old one. I know you guys have a lot of fun this week. Uh, what can people check out what's coming up from Marty McGee here after media days? We will be back on uh, SEC Network and, and ESPN Radio this Saturday morning, as always, 7 a.m. Eastern. And then uh, we will be back on the road for the fourth year now, I think, uh, starting Labor Day weekend. We're going to get down to, to uh, Gainesville because I guess it wasn't hot enough in Texas <laughs> for us, so we're going to get Gainesville week one. They got Miami coming in. They haven't played that game in a long time. It's a huge game, by the way, both sides. Huge game. That, yeah. that, that is a game that on week one will determine what bowl they are or are not in you know, yeah. at the end of the year and because it's, it's the margin's going to be tight for those guys. But, yeah, so we're going to do that. And then the, the, our talking season specials will air. Uh, they sent us the dates today. They're going to air the middle of, of August – um, uh, we're actually going to do – so we don't have East and West anymore. So we're going to do yeah. it alphabetically. So the 12th and 13th of August, 
be half the coaches and then half the coaches. And then we're also doing a third show, which is a Nick Saban, Greg Sankey state of the sport special. And we interviewed those two guys together. Nick Saban's your colleague now. That's the craziest, dude. It is. The, it, what was crazy was going into the ESPN green room where we're all sitting and eating and looking at show rundowns, and Saban's sitting there. Yeah. And he's, like, yucking it up and drinking coffee and going through show rundowns. Monday, at the end of the day, he was just kind of floating around yeah. Radio Row, just hanging out. Yeah, and he's, like, chill. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and his handler, Josh Maxson, I'm not speaking out of school here, a high-strung individual. <laughs> and Josh was, like, actually smiling. I was yeah. like, this is like, – who are you people? Yeah. But, no, it's great. And he's really good on TV. He's going to be terrific. And he's only going to get better. We knew, we knew we were in for it when he came into the meeting on Monday – and informed us that he, you know, just like when he's coaching, he doesn't know names, but he knows numbers. Number so and so at Texas A&M. Number so and so at Arkansas. Number so and so at Florida. And we're like, how do you know all this? I watched all sixteen spring games. I mean, that's that's yeah, he's, he's running he, away. That's how he's going to attack it. So he's going to be great. I'm excited to have him working with us, and, and I know the game day people are too. He is a Tennessee graduate. Does great work on Marty McGee and everything that you can follow with him at ESPN, ESPN.com. Ryan McGee, thanks for sitting down. Always great to talk. You to are you. the best, buddy. Always good to talk back to the homeland. <laughs>